Hey, I'm Kim from Sailing Britican. So what are the areas where most newbie cruisers mess up? Number one, it's maneuvering in and out of marinas. Number two, it's successfully anchoring. And number three is attaching to a mooring ball without making a spectacle of themselves. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to tie onto a mooring ball and how to release the lines and leave a mooring ball. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to give you a very special and little known technique on how you can make sure that the mooring ball doesn't hit your hull, making a disturbing noise or damage the side of your boat. First of all, what is a mooring ball? A mooring ball is a ball floating on the surface of the water that is attached to the seabed with some sort of anchor. The ball is usually connected to the anchoring device with a rope or wire. Often the anchoring device is a concrete block, slab, or a screw drilled into the seabed. Mooring balls can be found in harbors all over the world. At times mooring balls are used so that boaters don't anchor over a coral reef it's a way to protect the natural habitat. Other times, the harbor might be too deep to anchor. And in some cases, there are large mooring fields that operate as a business. Balls may be available for free, or sometimes they're free if you support the bar or restaurant that supplies them. Other times, you pay a nominal fee like $30 a night. What's important to understand is that there are no standards for mooring balls. Some are relatively easy to tie onto and others are extremely difficult. Some balls have a painter or line attached that's floating and easy to pick up, whereas others have no line at all. Some mooring balls are maintained and safe and others are ignored and in a state of disrepair. In most cases, your aim is first to determine whether the mooring ball is usable. Does it have a painter? Does it look like it's been serviced and in a good state? Does the ball indicate that it's for public use? Once a ball is assumed to be suitable, at least two lines need to be used to attach to the ball. Let me demonstrate. Once a ball is located, the helmsperson will aim the bow of the boat into the wind on approach to the ball. The crew member on deck needs to direct the helmsperson to where the ball is. Sometimes you need to point to where the painter is rather than the actual ball. I point forward and hold my hand open to say stop. But often Simon knows when to stop because when I bend over, it's an obvious sign that we're above the ball. The key is to approach the ball very, very slowly. Too many people race to the ball and then try to slow down and just overshoot the ball. As soon as the painter is in reach, I bend down and aim my pole to pick up the rope and not the eyelet. Far too often the pole will get stuck in the eyelet. I pull up the painter, set the pole down, and then grab my line to feed into the eyelet. Meanwhile, the helmsperson is popping the engine into forward and then into neutral, as much as necessary due to the conditions. If it's windier, Simon will pop it into forward more often and longer, and if there's no wind, he might not need to do anything. Once the line is through the eyelet, I pull it through, let go of the eyelet, and then throw all of the line over, holding on to the end of the rope. Next, I feed the line back through the same fair lead that the line exits the boat from. With quite a bit of slack, I then fasten the line. As you can see, I let out quite a bit of line. I will eventually bring this line in closer. The next step is to pull the second line through the eyelet from the other side of the bow. Sometimes I instruct Simon to bow thrust or use the engine to turn the boat. Other times I just let the wind take the boat and often it naturally turns in a way that allows me to reach down and pick up the painter on the other side of the boat. So once again, I pick up the painter and feed the line into the eyelet. I throw the line over into the water and pull it back in under the safety rail and through the fair lead. This time, I pull the line in without leaving slack. To finish, I then wait until the first side is slack and adjust the line so the painter eyelet is close to the boat and an even distance on both sides. Regardless of whether you have a monohull or a catamaran, the same principle applies. Two lines are required, both leaving and returning to the same side of the boat in which the line originated. To take the lines off a mooring ball, I first make sure that the helms person's ready and at the helm. I then choose the line that has the most slack in it. 
I untie the top line and if possible I'll untie the bottom line which is a shorter distance from the boat to the ball. I'll pull the line in. Once it's on the deck I announce that the port side line is clear. I then do the same on the other side of the boat. Now from time to time there will be too much pressure on the line and I'll have to ask Simon to put the engine in forward to create a bit of slack for me. But for the most part, however, it's rather easy to take the lines off and pull the shortest end in. And once all the lines are in and out of the water, I give the thumbs up and say it's time to go. And here's my little known technique that will keep a mooring ball from hitting the side of your boat, making an annoying bumping sound and or damaging the gel coat on your hull. You simply need to add another line that can run down through the anchor plate to the top of the mooring ball and back up. By adding this quick but effective extra line, you'll sleep better at night and know that your hull isn't getting damaged. As a side note, it's usually during no wind situation that this is a concern. Provided that it's windy, it's not a necessary step. Would you like to gain experience on tying onto a mooring ball? How about maneuvering in and out of a marina? And let's throw in some anchoring too. Getting real world experience before becoming a blue water cruiser isn't easy. That's why we set up the Britican experience. Come out with us for a week and we'll not only help you to increase your confidence, but we'll also share all our little known tips and techniques to make your transition to the lifestyle easier and less stressful. Start off by looking like a professional. Sign up for the Britican experience today.